Yeah, good morning YouTube. In this video segment, I'll cover how to figure out what size of battery bank you'll need and how to charge it. Again, I'm assuming 12 volt DC and 120 volt AC for simplicity. I'll describe how to account for various uh, system voltages at the end of the series. So suppose I had a 50 watt AC load I wanted to run 24 hours a day. In the winter, I'd have about 16 hours of dark and 8 hours of light. I'd need to run that 50 watt load for up to 16 hours off batteries. 50 times 16 equals 800 watt hours. So recall the divide by 10 rule from the previous video. 800 divided by 10 equals 80 amp hours which is the amount of energy I'd need to withdraw from my battery bank. You don't want to completely drain a battery bank. In fact, you only want to use 10 to 20 percent of its capacity routinely for longer battery life. So, select a state of charge you're comfortable with and use that to size the battery bank based on that calculated amp hour number. If you pick 10 percent discharge, multiply 80 by 10 to get 800 amp hours or for 20 percent discharge multiply by 5 to get 400 amp hours let's go with 400 amp hours for the rest of this example your number will likely be different this battery bank size is usually called C or capacity so assuming lead acid batteries like I have you'll usually need to charge that bank at C over 10 or 40 amps to be able to recharge it the next day. So this number represents the rating of my charge controller. I would need a 40 amp charge controller to charge a 400 amp hour battery bank at a 40 amp or 1 tenth C rate. With lead acid batteries you don't want to charge them too fast as they'll overheat and boil off the water inside. And if you look at the PV Watts webpage, I'll put a link in the video description, you'll see the solar radiation hours per day and this can run from 3 to 8 over the year depending on your latitude. This is the equivalent full power hours you'd get over the course of a day. So if I had 40 amps of charging and needed to replace the 80 amp hours I pulled out of the batteries, it would take two plus hours to recharge. Thus, with the three hours of full power light I get in December, I should just be able to replace that 80 amp hours the next day. Yes, if it's cloudy the next day, things get complicated. You can do all the statistical analysis and size your battery bank to cope with the worst probable conditions. Or you can do like what I did and punt. Switch back to grid power until it gets sunny. It can get really complicated and expensive fast if you want to handle multiple days of cloudy weather with a solar power system. For example, if instead of 16 hours overnight, I wanted to handle three cloudy days on top of that, that's 88 hours, which is 4,400 watt hours at 50 watts, or 440 amp hours. So my system got almost six times as big, went from 80 to 440, just to handle a few cloudy days. Now I can plug back into the grid for three days and that 50 watt load would only cost me 40 cents to run. I find it hard to justify the added cost for that capability, so I call my system slightly off grid. Anyway, that wraps up this segment on how to size a battery bank and charge controller to run an inverter load. In the next segment, I'll cover how to size the solar panel array to handle that battery bank and charge controller. So stay tuned for that uh, episode. 
Uh, be sure to check out some of my other videos. You can subscribe to the channel for updates. And as always, thanks for watching.